Time is 7.05. We got a lot of business to do tonight. We've got an impending storm, so I'm going to move right along. All three stuff in the present. Recording the Secretary's present, Tom Ministry's present, and recording for the um, public at large is Mr. Leo Martell and video. Thank you. Okay, I have three minutes, gentlemen. I'll make a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes of November 8th, 2018. As amended date? Yep, there's only a couple of minor changes. There is no second to motion. Any discussion, Mr. Minister Chairman? No. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I make a motion to accept the non public uh, November 8th, 8.52 uh, minutes. I'll second by motion. Any discussion of those minutes? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Gentlemen, those are CO2. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Non public was not a member. Correct. And I'd like to make a motion to accept the minutes for Thursday, November 8th, for a uh, Dunbar and Board Select Committee meeting for non public. At, uh, it was done at 9.30 in the morning on Thursday, November 8th. And yeah, I'll second the motion. I'm going to abstain. Bobby, any discussion on those minutes? No. I was not present at the meeting. Okay. Hearing no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, Chief, I just want to make sure you've got a copy of those minutes to, for your peer review to look at. Mm -hmm. uh, just uh, an FYI, you can review them. Okay. Okay. I'm going to yeah. Lean, lean more, we'll make sure you get the minutes. Nice. Thank you. How are you? Good. Okay, it's just you. Sorry. Okay. I'm going to open up this meeting for public comment. Uh, we have an agenda. We're going to be at 7 15 or shortly, there, or shortly thereafter. Shortly after that, we'll be discussing about the Page Corner traffic study. But first, I'm going to open up for public comment. This is where, if you've got something of value to say that's not on the agenda or you just want to, just, uh, something of concern to you, please state your name for the record your, and your address, and uh, um, we'll go from there. I'll start in the back row. Okay. Uh, just that. Uh, the uh, Reefs Cross Dunbarton will be uh, December 8th at 10 o'clock. We'll have a ceremony on the Commons by Caleb Statue and then disperse. Uh, Monday, we marked all the graves that, uh, of the veterans, and so it's uh, all ready to go. Okay. Snow or no snow. What time on December 8th? December 8th. 10 a.m.? 10 a.m. Yep. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> we all set. All set. Back row. Right. John. All set. Anything? Anything? Okay. Next row. Second row up. Second row. Anything? No. First row. We're good to go. Okay. I'm going to close public comment and continue on. Yeah. Yes. Sign. <clears throat> also and uh, do we have a check for $185? We do. Uh, number. I think that would be. Yeah. Exactly. I'm going to make a, about five checks. I to make a motion per RSA 31 colon 95 dash B Roman numeral three paragraph B to accept a donation in the amount of $185 for Reese across Dunbarton um, from several local residents' donations. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 No discussion. No, it was a, it's a good, good job game. done. Yep, as always. Uh, we are at seven fifteen. Yeah, yeah we got a few minutes. Seven twenty-two. <coughs> proof and we're mail box. That's I'm exactly what I'm doing. Okay, Bob, I'm just gonna try to skip to a few items in the mailbox and so keep things going. We're gonna start at seven fifteen sharp for the uh, public hearing, so we're gonna allow some others to get in. We don't want to start too soon, and then people will get upset. Okay, uh, just uh, Bob, FYI, we got a, a letter from Cohen Steele referencing yeah. the uh, 
the amount of money on the uh, that they would convert to <coughs> seal if we decide to go down that path. And so we'll be to that one, Mike. Please. Um, we have a letter from Cohen Steel. They're the supplier of the steel for the town hall building. And then the contractor that was hired to repair the roof purchased the steel for that roof through Cohen. <coughs> Never paid the supplier for the steel. Uh, we have a balance of money left over that was not paid out to the contractor, and we're going to try and pay that portion of the money to Cohen Steel to try and make them whole for the, at least the cost of their material because they did supply the product to the town of Dunbar. So um, we discussed it earlier, we were in consensus to pay them, and so we've attached a copy of their new invoice with a copy of their previous invoice. And um, I guess we can make a consensus of the board that we pay the portion of money that we've at least got left over in that. I think we uh, Yeah, agreed. I think so. <coughs> we talked about um, maybe not paying it in full until we decide to use the steel when right. we get the engineering back with the wood. Right. Um, but at least pay it the portion that we have left. And that will empty that fund out to the end of the year for the Correct. Correct. Yeah, because you may not even, if we're fortunate to get a timber frame, though, we may not even go with steel. Right, right. It gets out of the... Uh, and this won't make them 100% whole bond, but it'll... I know it, but it'll at least sit on the cost. Yeah. Okay. And it's sitting there anyways. Right. You know, and <laughs> so let's, uh, we'll plan, to, we'll move the money to uh, the main yeah. balance of coal steel. Okay. Very good. Thanks. Okay. I'm going to just, uh, to, I had some old business in the last meeting. Remember I tabled, we tabled the idea of an insurance discussion of uh, um, eliminating the grandfather clause? Oh, yeah. I, I, I was thinking that this week, I'd like to um, uh, maybe take it off the table, just uh, readdress it, not today, but maybe in the time of maybe when we readdress the personal plan in the summer, then we further discuss it. So I'd like to, re like to rescind my motion from last week. And, um, and so, and move it to the point where I'll bring it up again during when we look at the personnel plan. But, I mean, it's a good suggestion because I was going to rescind the second anyways because I think we need to see what's how we compare with other communities. And uh, we do have a tiered system. And, uh, you know, until we know exactly what's out there. We don't have enough information. Yeah. And, uh, I did provide the, the, I crunched the numbers. You have a copy in your basket, right. so you can use that for reference. Right. But, but the point is that we don't have enough comparison information. And I brought up, I seconded the motion only to bring up the debate or discussion. There wasn't a whole lot, you know. So we tabled it so we could address it this week, let everybody else clear the cobwebs. But uh, I was, you know, if I don't have enough stuff to say this is a right or wrong thing to do. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather put it off and if you know, some people want to call communities and find out how they address it. And, and if there are people that are grandfathered or whatever, I mean, uh, we have plenty of time. So summertime when we have those off week uh, meetings would be a good time to look at that. I don't think this is the time to jump in. You're changing the plan, number one, give people a chance to get used to the plan. And the other thing is, we'll see how it all works out, you know, with the okay. rest of it. Well, as you guys could see from last week, I thought it was too much to do in one year, and we've already changed the health insurance plan. I think that taking it one step at a time is what we about next time around. So as a second to that most I would be sin. So we're in consensus. So we're in consensus. Okay. So be it. All right, now time is uh, 7.15. Uh, one of the uh, issues that I, I started uh, last about a, over the last year uh, was Page's Corner and that wonderful intersection which no one knows how to turn into or turn out of or whatever. <laughs> and what was uh, what brought it to immediate attention, we had a, uh, a fatality there. And that drove it home for me. And so with that fatality, I asked the um, police department to look into what do we knew, what do we do to change that? And so early this year, we had a meeting with the Department of Transportation. It was uh, chaired by the, uh, they had a meeting with us, the police department, the board of selectmen met together. And
and they prepared some proposals for us. And it's a state road, and they control what happens, but they like to obtain input from the town. And the purpose of this meeting is, a, is an information meeting, and get a feeling for how residents feel about it, and we're going to get some input from you all. And with that, I'm going to give it to Sergeant Gunnar <coughs> to uh, basically give an overview, and along with an assist from the police chief, who was all, we're all at the meeting, and uh, give an overview, because we have the report now. And that's step one. And to do something immediately. Step two, um, and Chris will, sorry, will talk about it some more, but in order to change something in the state, you gotta get a, into a queue. And it's a 10 year queue to do anything. And they say 10 years is an estimate. It could be 16 years. But the thing is, if you don't put your name in there or put your, take a ticket and stand in line, you're never gonna get anything done. And we're taking the steps now to get in the queue. And I want to commend the police department for taking the lead on this. So, Chris is all yours. Good evening, everybody. I'm Chris Remillard. I think I know most of you. I've spoken with many of you uh, about this meeting coming up and the road safety audit report from the DOT. Um, but before I dive into this, does everybody have a handout? Okay. Um, the handout, you'll see that first page is a CAD drawing. Uh, Dunbar resident John Stevens put that together for us. Um, following that, you'll see some traffic turn count movements. The Central New Hampshire Regional Planning Commission was our partner in this project, and they put together uh, that data for us. And essentially what that is is looking at lead commuter times in the morning and afternoon and how many cars are turning uh, into and out of that intersection. And then pages three and four are a road safety audit report that was compiled by the Department of Transportation. Um, <laughs> diving into the intersection, we just have some uh, graphics up here. I think most everyone is familiar with the configuration of the intersection, but it's important to note uh, this graphic over here, if you're driving westbound, you have a 35 mile per hour warning sign coming up, followed by a 35 mile per hour speed sign coming through the intersection, you have the right of way going westbound. If you're heading eastbound, just like the other direction, you have another 35 mile per hour warning sign, a 35 mile per hour speed sign, a warning for a stop ahead, which is just past the entrance to Old Ford Estates. Jewett Road heading north out of town, there's a stop sign here, stop sign heading eastbound, and a stop sign coming from Stark Highway north if you're heading northbound. So as everyone is familiar, it's a three-way stop configuration. What we see as a police department is a lot of driver confusion at that intersection. Um, and certainly when we open up for public comment, I'm sure there's a lot of people who have witnessed accidents or had near misses themselves. Um, the Department of Transportation came up with essentially four options. The first three are what they call short-term solutions. Option number one would be to add oversized stop signs. So it would keep the three stop configuration. Right now the stop signs are around two feet in size. What they're proposing is to add stop signs around three feet in size. There's also some talk about adding uh, some additional warning signage, potentially some fixed speed readout <coughs> display signs as you come into that intersection giving that visual readout, hey, you're driving too fast, you need to slow down. Um, and then they also talked about, there's a, um, some shrubbery right by the Molly Stark property. If you're heading um, eastbound, it's on your right-hand side, they're talking about trimming that back as well. So that's option one. So again, it would keep the same configuration, but it would add some oversized signage and potentially some additional signage to warn people of the intersection and the speed itself. Option two, <clears throat> as suggested by the DOT, would be to remove the eastbound stop sign. What this would do at the intersection is east and westbound traffic would have free flowing right of way. North and southbound traffic would have to stop. Again, that's option two. Option three from the DOT would be to add a stop sign and make it a four way stop configuration. Finally, option four is the long-term solution. That would be to add a roundabout. What we did is we applied for Central New Hampshire Regional Planning Commission's long-term transportation plan 
for a roundabout, we received an estimate from an engineer. And at today's prices, it would have a price tag of around a million dollars. You extrapolate that out 10 years with inflation, who knows what it's going to be. But as the chairman said, it at least gets us in the queue for that project. If money is allocated down the road for a roundabout, the town can still come and say, yes or no, we want to pursue that. But at least it gets us in the queue for an option down the road. So that's essentially the DOT options. Um, and I'll, I guess, turn it over to the chief if there's any additional things that I missed. Uh, just covered it pretty well as, as far as what the uh, what the options are. But the one thing that I noticed following the tally <clears throat> is this the bush that's located over uh, in the, on the eastbound lane at that eastbound stop. When you're parked at the stop at the stop line here, it really blocks your view of this oncoming traffic. It it, it doesn't allow you to see the, the other vehicles coming, so I think as an immediate solution, and that's something that we could do. The, the, the bush itself is on private property, um, so I believe we'd have to get landowner permission to be able to remove that, but that's something we could do pretty much immediately. And then there's various opinions on whether we should go with a four-way stop or two-way stop. So. Okay. So. Then, three options, I mean, we have to do something. I, the three-way stop, in my opinion, is super confusing. Unless you live here and you know it by heart. But I think it's when any, any visitor coming up to this town and they see the, that configuration, massive confusion. And some people just stop dead in the road and don't, want to, don't know what to do. We've all seen that. So I'm just going to open up a public comment now. If you've got a comment or which way you think we should be leaning, let us know. So just raise your hand and I'll call on you. The first victim. Go ahead. Fred, state your name. Fred Mullen, uh, Little Stock Lane. Uh, I've been on the fire department for 45 years. I've been to many, many accidents in that intersection. I've been to two fatal one at the intersection and one halfway between the intersection and the power lines. Now, if you're coming east from Route 77, the problem you have there is you Go before you get to the deli, you're cresting the hill, okay, and you're looking into the sky, that beautiful sky, especially in the fall with the leaves on the side, people are looking in the sky because they're, they're doing this. Now, uh, you got to bring the eyes down to the stop sign. Nobody sees that little red light up there either. I've been, so a lot of people say, they, they go through the stop sign, they get in an accident, what stop sign? Never saw it. Okay, to me, the solution to that is, you bring an alternating red lights on the stop sign, like a school bus. Okay, now you're bringing your eyes down, or else you have a circular light. I've, I've seen some around stop signs that are they're flashing right there to stop, because they have to bring their eyes down. Also, another problem coming east, 7 o'clock in the morning, you can't get through that intersection because the people come, coming east play train. I've seen it many times. The first car to go through, the four or five cars will stick right on their bumper and go through. Now, if you're going from uh, Stock Highway North, you're playing a guessing game. Is that person going to stop or not? Is that person turning left because he didn't have a right, he didn't have his uh, directional lights on? Coming the other way, is that person going to go straight? Is he coming right or is he coming left? You're playing a guessing game there. A lot of times people start off and somebody goes to stop from the stop sign. Okay? Uh, now, with these, all these reports, they never, never think of the winter time. Coming west from Clinton Street, the power lines, the temperature drops right there and the road freezes fast right there because you're getting the north wind coming down through the power lines. I've seen it many times. Been, uh, that road's been so icy you couldn't stand up on it. I've been to a fatal right there. Okay, what happened with that? The person was coming westbound, they tried to make the hill, they slid sideways, t on the car coming the other way. Killed the person. Okay. That, if you put a roundabout, you put a two-way stop, you're compounding a problem in the winter time because the cars are going to stop and they're not going to be able to make it up that hill. I've seen DOT with a dump truck back up the hill to sand the road because you couldn't get traction to sand that road. Okay, So, a roundabout to me is no good. 
because you're compounding a problem. You're also compounding a train problem coming east in the morning because now they've got a right away to go through and they're not going to stop. There's going to be 40 cars going through. Mark my words, they do it at Wallace Road with the high school kids. They'll play train and nobody else can go around. Coming up Jewel Road, what they need there is another stop ahead sign down towards our dry hydrant. The reason why? Because you're cresting the, the hill in Jewel Road and all of a sudden you look, why am I at the intersection? Because it's just stopped right there. You come on to that intersection just like that and I see people blow that intersection also. Never see that stop sign for the last second. So to me, they need to stop a head sign a little further down to warn them. Okay, now, like I said, they never think of the winter time. Because if you uh, have a two-way stop, the traffic's gonna go, uh, it's gonna help the traffic going westbound, not the eastbound because they're just gonna blow right through. Okay, and uh, so I would really, to me, the best option is, is option number one. Okay, because first of all, you got to bring the ice down because I've seen it happen before. Many people say, what stop sign? Okay, now coming, and also people don't use the directional lights. Now the bottom line is one word that will solve all this problem. It's called courtesy. You know how it used to be? Well, you go, you go, you go, you go. Now the attitude is, I'm here for us, I'm going. You know, that's part of the problem. But I would hate to see them put a stop sign coming westbound because you're going to compound that problem. Guarantee you, especially in the winter time, because people don't think of the winter time. We do. I've been there in car accidents. Okay? So you want the westbound traffic to keep flowing because they got to make the hill. <coughs> Sometimes when you stop on that hill, you've got to start easing up as you go up that hill, otherwise you're not going to make it. Same with Jewett Road. You know, like I said, that's my opinion is I hope DLT listens and thinks ahead, not just, oh, here's a report, let's do something. Because think of what's, you put a stop sign there, think of the consequences. Summer, winter, and fall. Now, going west certain times of the day, okay, you get the sun directly in your eyes. If you're heading towards where from the, you know, the west, the sun setting, you know. So that's the problem that people have got to be aware of too. But uh, I'm all for solving the problem, but guarantee you, the traffic circle and a two-way stop is not the answer. No way. I guarantee you, because you're going to compound that problem. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. Thank you, Fred. Anyone else? Go ahead. Mark, uh, Don Larson, uh, First View Drive. Uh, are the rumble strips uh, available for this? Uh, coming they, at the bridge? They and sparked the about them, but they were a little bit too noisy, I think, in the neighborhood there. As people were approaching that with the residential houses, the DOT didn't suggest using the rumble strips because of the additional noise in the neighborhood. What about uh, be right by the bridge? At, you know, just you know, coming from the transfer station, coming uh, east, pretty far enough out. I just want to speak on the rumble strips. I vacation up in Jackman, Maine, and they have moose warning signs up there with those with those rumble strips across the road. In, in the campus stayed at, at night when the trucks came and when the cars came that's all you could hear it carried a long long way so yes they're very effective in catching the attention of the drivers they will drive the people who live in that neighborhood out of their mind that's all they're going to hear every time a car comes up the road is that it'll make them crazy so, so for that reason it's, it's really not a, a, a good idea well, how about uh, lighting the uh, signs and putting them further out so that they see them when they come across that bridge before they start going up the hill? Yeah, that was a suggestion on option number one. Yeah. And also, as Chris spoke to, uh, they talked about putting a solar um, speed sign there that was permanent. The town would own after, I think, Chris, maybe you could speak a little more on that, but that sign would be there permanently so it'd be like one of the police flashing when you're speeding going through that intersection to try and slow that traffic coming from wear down mm -hmm. uh, before they get to that stop sign because they come in there pretty hot sometimes i know i've waited a long time to make sure they're not going to go right <coughs> through you know i make sure they stop before i pull out even though i had the right away yeah the problem in the afternoon is the westbound traffic if you don't have the three-way stop there, you'd never get across. Because you have to wait for a break in that westbound traffic. Okay. 
Yes. Point of clarification, do we have statistics as to, I know we have, speak of, of a fatality, do we have statistics as to how many fatalities or conversely how many accidents in that for a year, two, three? Can I speak to that? Yes, yeah. Um, kind of piggybacking on what Fred said, um, very, very knowledgeable. He's been on the fire department a long time, so <coughs> if he says there's been two fatals, in the vicinity of that intersection. I am, in fact, know of one from last year. Um, so two fatalities. There is crash data statistics that we have. I actually didn't bring those with me tonight. Um, the crashes themselves at that intersection aren't as many as people may think, but I think the source of frustration is the near misses that people have. Um, we certainly have plenty of fender benders and, and motor vehicle crashes there, but it's certainly not, um, I wouldn't call it plentiful. I wouldn't call it, um, you know, we, we don't have like 50 or 60 a year. We maybe have a dozen somewhere in that vicinity, which is still a lot, um, but it's certainly not as many as, as some people think. Um, the, the speed signs, speaking from the police department sign, I think is a good idea. Um, what the DOT talked about is installing, as Dave said, some solar powered speed readout signs. So there's a couple different options. You could put them, you know, east and westbound, north and southbound, or if DOT was willing to do it, you could put one at each uh, corner of the intersection um, as it drops down to 35, just to kind of give people that visual display that Fred was talking about, bring their eyes back down. Um, they would pay for the initial install, the town would be responsible for the upkeep and the maintenance. So if something was to go wrong with a sign, uh, if something needed to be replaced, that, would, that cost would be borne by the town. Thank you. Follow-up. Sure. Um, if we were to move with that, is there an ETA for installation? My impression... What was the question? She wants to know, is there an estimated time of install if we went with the option of putting the signs in right away? When we met with the DOT, um, they're, they're very busy. Um, it took, I think, roughly three months to get the actual report with their recommendations, that two-page report. Mm -hmm. With that being said, after conferring with the town, and officials, I think if we put something together that we want to see done and send it to the state, my impression is that this is a priority for them and they do want to see some safety improvements. Mm -hmm. um, so my, I think it would be fairly quick. Mm -hmm. um, what's interesting to note, right, wrong, or indifferent, if you look at that road safety audit report, the DOT recommends option three, which is a four-way stop. Mm -hmm. And I think there is some merit to what Fred's saying about you got to take into consideration some, some weather components as well. Um, I was always under the impression, whether it's correct, incorrect or correct, I don't know, that the reason for the three-way stop configuration is because of that grade heading westbound, which is why it is the way it is. So I found it interesting that the DOT is now saying, well, the safest option is to put in another stop sign. And that's all outlined right in the report. Thank you. Okay. I was also under the impression sure. that it, your name oh, Torn Ward, Stark Highway North. Thank you. I was also the impression that that might be the case for the three-way stop, because getting up the hill if you stop, you may be in trouble in the winter. But I think from the near misses I, that have certainly caught my attention personally in the, the fatal accident last year, it appears that southbound traffic, as well as some of the northbound, doesn't adhere to even close to the speed limit. When I've seen people go straight through that, including the tractor trailers, it didn't appear that they were even remotely close to 35 miles an hour. It may only be perception. But I like the idea of the flashing sign, certainly 13 headed west, I guess, um, and 77 headed east, that if we could get more attention drawn to that reduced speed, maybe that would also draw more attention. And uh, as another thing that I've observed, previously at the intersection of Wallace Road, and I think it was Shirley Hill, uh, the town of Bedford had solar powered lights on the stop signs. They've since been removed. I believe that was not a, port, a proper area for solar due to the wooded coverage. But it certainly grabbed your attention. And uh, also near, near the Bedford High School, they had large stop signs that were rimmed with flashing LEDs, which also grabbed your attention. Like was said, brings your attention back to the stop sign. That one overhead just doesn't seem to cut it. It seems like it's easily missed by the distracted drivers, and it just doesn't seem to be enough. Perhaps even a flashing light on the where the speed reduction starts at that warning sign might also bring more attention down to 
you got to slow down, and there's that ahead as well. But I, I wonder if it might be a lot of the speed combined with the distraction and simple people ignoring. And, and Torin, there's certainly some merit to your speed observation. I actually asked one of our officers who conducts a lot of traffic enforcement at that intersection and writes a lot of tickets at that intersection, what he generally <laughs> sees for speed of people who either have the right of way going through westbound or people who flat out blow through the stop sign uh, or stop signs. And he said it's usually around 48 to 50 miles an hour. Um, the uh, fatal crash that we had, um, the gentleman was in excess of 55 miles an hour going through that stop sign. So there's definitely merit to your observation on the speed. And I think there is something to be said with the solar powered option. I think that's regardless of what we choose as a town, I think adding in some type of uh, flashing lights or solar powered beacons or something to bring your attention and keep your attention there. Um, because no matter what configuration we choose, we still have to try and mitigate human error and people not paying attention. And, and the more signage and cautionary signage and lights that you have there, I think we can reduce that. So I think that the beacons are a great idea, certainly. Alex Amman, um, Stucker Way North, very close to that intersection. And uh, I'm, I'm very, very happy that after 10 years living there, finally something is hopefully done. Um, up until Fred spoke, I was favoring the um, four-way stop, so I think it's very confusing for, as you already said, or someone said earlier, for, for non-residents to, to think, oh, it's just a three-way, the upcoming traffic can go through. So I think slowing down, traffic heading east is a wonderful idea, are the lights too. Um, maybe it will help, but it will not help the confusion, so maybe we need to have extra LEDs about around the three-way stop notification, or make that more clear that upcoming traffic will not stop. Okay. Go ahead, sir. I'm going to stand because that way you guarantee it's only going to be two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm Tom Cassano, my wife Karen. We live at 10 Old Fort Lane. Uh, we had a kind of a neighborhood association meeting a week or so ago in which we discussed, you know, some of the options that were put forth on this. And I'm not speaking for the association, but I want to verbalize a few things that came out of that. And also let you know that um, my experience has been with some road signs on in Concord when Love and Road was being changed and developed from 393 going in. We met with the state dozens of times about how they're going to do the intersection, how they're going to do the signage, how the traffic lights were going to go, and <clears throat> a lot of the public input and the business input implemented changes to their plans. So the input that we give them is very critical. Uh, but I think you need to look at the process we're going through because we're kind of, you know, Fred gave us some tremendous background information on what the problems are at the intersection. So then you identify the problems and you have to figure out all right, what do we do to solve the problems? And then we're kind of throwing out some ideas about, you know, a, a stop sign, a traffic sign, rumble strips, whatever. But you need to sit back and say, all right, what is the problem? Let's identify that. Let's figure out the ways to solve each problem. And the intersection doesn't have one problem. It's got multiple problems. You know, the traffic coming from the where direction. You're coming down across the expressway over the over the dam, you know, with the guardrails on the side where you feel like you're on the runway of the airport and you're gonna, you know, fly through there. Then you come over the hill and all of a sudden it drops to 35. And, you know, you see a lot of skid marks when people finally realize, oh geez, there's a stop sign about 100 feet in front of me. They're going downhill to the stop sign. And if it's a little bit slick, they're sliding right through it. So there's there's a lot of problems. The, the icy conditions in the wintertime come in that direction. So you identify what the problems are, then you sit down and say, okay, you know, one of the problems is we need to control speed. Uh, the other is we need to inform the drivers that aren't aware of what the intersection is, how to go through the intersection properly. Um, you know, Karen's pointed out, you pull up to the stop sign, and there's a sign that's about half the size of this right here that says three-way three -way stop intersection. Mm -hmm. Now, as Fred mentioned before, they don't even see the, the light up ahead because you know it's, it's a nice day and everything. They'll look in that direction. They don't see the stop sign. So you sit down and say, okay, well, what is going to what is going to solve that problem, and what's going to solve the problem of the visibility the other way and the people coming north? How do you identify? And we threw out some ideas just at that meeting that I've seen around the state, and you know part of that is 
All right, I'm going to sit down. I've been past two minutes. <laughs> the, uh, the, the, there's approach signs available. I've been in other towns where you come up and there's a dangerous intersection a quarter mile ahead or half a mile ahead. Well, there's the sign a half mile back that says dangerous intersection ahead. All right, so for us who live here, we know there's a dangerous intersection there. But for a tourist or somebody coming through, you alert them a half a mile or a quarter mile before the intersection, you're coming to a dangerous intersection. All right, you've raised their awareness. Now they're starting to think, okay, I gotta stop looking at the trees and start looking for this dangerous intersection. And this is stuff that doesn't have to take a 10 year plan with the state. Uh, you simply sit down as a, as a town and with people who've traveled these roads every day for five years or 40 years and say, let's identify these problems, let's come up with ways of solving the problems. If you go to the state with a plan and say, this is what we want to do because here's the, here's the issues we've identified and this is how we want to solve the problems. That's how traffic engineers think. Traffic engineers don't like to just have people throw in emotional suggestions. You have to go back with data. You have to go back with, here's, a, here's the problem, here's a solution to the problem, here's where it's used elsewhere in the state, and this is where it's effective. They'll implement it and they'll do it quickly because they don't have to go back and do any other studies on it and justify spending $200 on a road sign that, you know, that we would put up in a heartbeat. They have to rationalize that it's okay to put it in their budget. Uh, and a couple other suggestions we had for increasing visibility, and this is just things that, we, that I've picked up in working with other traffic situations in Concord is, um, I don't know how many of the problems we have are there at nighttime, but I mean, we just came through that intersection on our way here, and you know how much visibility there is at night there? Zero. Right. There's not one light anywhere around that intersection. Now, any intersection you go to in any city that's a high traffic intersection or a dangerous intersection is lit up like it's, you know, Fenway Park. Mm -hmm. But this intersection is pitch black, and we've, I've seen numerous in, night crashes there, and I don't know if it's related to the person you know, fell asleep at the wheel, or they just couldn't see where they were going, uh, or they come up to an intersection that's black, but they've got this one flashing light up here that's gonna direct, draw their attention up here, and they don't see this little two-foot square stop sign that had no warning that they were coming up to a stop. So there's built-in hazards in this intersection, that we've kind of taken for granted because we're used to it. But for people who aren't used to it, you're, you're really throwing them into a, a quagmire of an intersection because they come up and it really throws them into a tizzy. Totally agree. So when you identify the problems and then you come up with sound solutions, and some of them might be, you know, if you put two, we, we pay for the street light at the end of our road because we want that, that intersection lit. And we want it lit because it's safety for us to turn into that intersection because there's this nice stone flower thing right in the middle of the road. And if it's black enough, I'll be the first guy that's going to hit it. <coughs> so we have that intersection lit to make it safer. So, you know, if we can afford the $18 a month for that street light, then certainly the town can afford $36 a month for two street lights on that intersection. And I believe now if you go with the LED street lights, it's probably like 10 bucks a month. So that's a very low cost solution. I mean, it would be going an ongoing expense, but if you, if you light it up, if we have to provide some power to a stop sign because the solar isn't gonna be sufficient there, if, we have, if you have double flashing lights up there, you know, so I, we, you come down 393, coming into Concord, and you hit Commercial Street, and first it says, slow down, stop ahead, that's back about a half a mile, then you come up and there's two yellow flashing lights, you know, bang, 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 well, and they're bright. That catches your attention. So you say, okay, something's happening here. I got to pay attention. But you come up to our intersection, and the only thing we use that light for is if there's a power outage, we know if the power's back on, if the light's on. <laughs> <laughs> so if you, if you take this approach, and you gather all the information, and, and you get some people that can really, particularly the police department, they, they're, they're there identifying the problems all the time, identify the problems, come up with sound solutions that are cost effective and can be done in very timely fashion. You know, tomorrow would be good as far as the, all of us are concerned. Uh, and present it to the state, they'll do it real quick. If you leave it open-ended, they'll, you know, no, it'll be fact, years. We met with them and 
this, these were their proposals. They want to hear back from us. Yeah. They're not going to circle, They're not going to isolate this to one proposal. They're going to listen to what we. They're looking for our input. Yeah, but I mean, we have to decide what the improvements have to be. If we go with option one, you have to come back and say, "This is why we're on option one, and here's everything we need to make this work." Because their proposals, I mean, there's, I'm sure there's more than one paragraph. They, they well, couldn't have taken them three months to write well, two paragraphs. Oh yeah, it could. <laughs> <laughs> the. Um, Job security. But when, when you go back, you can't just say, we like option one. You said, so no, we no. like option one, and here's all the things we want to see built into in option addition, one. I yeah. agree. Okay. Um, Sir, most, any, yeah. Ed Wagner, Kenny Hill Road. Thank you. Uh, most of what everybody said is exactly what I was going to say, the fact that you need more lights. If I don't know if any of you have been around where the Bedford School is, but they got this flashing light around the stop sign that you can't miss. So something like that would be immediate. Like you say, bring the, like he said, to bring the tension down to that. A little bit of advance warning is very helpful, the dangerous intersection and stuff like that. So I would like to say that that would be a great thing to do. The stop sign on the westbound side is, is a definite no-no, especially in the wintertime. You get at night at 5 o'clock when everybody's coming home and they start stopping on that intersection, you're going to have one heck of a line of cars trying to get up that hill if the weather is bad. So all of that stuff is definitely something we got to consider. But one other thing that we, we could consider too is it was mentioned that there was this little tiny sign three-way stop, but we should really put on that sign, not only is it a three-way stop, but they need to yield to the oncoming traffic. Because a lot of people think, oh, I can stop there stopping. Um, you know, I can take off and all of that stuff. I've seen numerous misses and they're, I mean, you, almost daily you can see a miss on there when you're coming through there but to put a sign that says stop three-way stop and yield to oncoming traffic or yield to traffic coming from the right or yield to traffic coming from the left that way anybody that is unfamiliar with that intersection is going to know what they're supposed to do because that was one of the points that was brought up is that they're confused Let me just think. oh and also if they put up the the uh, roundabout, or they put up the four-way stop, or the uh, just put up two-way stop signs on Jewett and 13, you're going to run into the problem of you're never going to get out of 13 northbound because everybody's going to be zipping through there, zipping through there, mm -hmm. zipping through there, coming from where, and I mean, uh, just getting out of there now is hard. So I I think that the solution of the three-way stop signs with a lot more information and a lot more flashing to bring your attention to it would be very helpful. Thank you, John. Any more comments? <clears throat> Great, sir. Brian Arrow, number 662 old fort. Um, I actually concur with all the comments everyone else has said today. Um, I'm not in favor of a, a, a four-way stop. Some of the other options that the state brought up, we talked about the rumble strips, and that was uh, in, turned down because of the noise. Mm -hmm. We looked at, uh, we even asked about the stoplights, uh, regular uh, three-way stoplights or normal stoplights, not enough traffic to support it, so that was thrown away. Um, the, the roundabout is, uh, is just one idea. They, they even thought of making a turning lane um, coming up on Clinton Street, uh, making a turning lane, expanding that road so there's a turning lane uh, to help so you can have throughput traffic and then have a turning lane there. So those are just long-term options. But I think that right now we're, what we want to do is uh, summarize some of your comments. Chris will put them together. And uh, uh, it looks like we're looking at, I, I see a lot of emphasis on option one. Any other, any, does anyone strongly on anything else, any other option that anyone feels strongly about? Sound off. Go ahead, John. Yeah. John Trotter, 300 South Highway North. A um, couple of things everybody needs to remember that it's their road. So they'll take our, our, our feedback, but again, it's their road. And I work with the DOT quite often. And again, they don't do things half ass, period. A couple of, couple of comments that I have about putting uh, speed indicator signs. They, they, we've implemented them, implemented them in the community that I work in and I have found that people use it as a uh, as a toy <laughs> seriously yeah so how high can I make it go today you got it yeah <laughs> when the police aren't around I've sat there and I've watched it because I, I sit there to make sure the thing operates that's my that's part of my responsibility so personally I think again really a four-way stop is is the right option I totally understand again the 
the the grade coming up from the east is going to be a, a, a situation but again dot and and public works they understand again you have to spend a little more time and care salting and sanding that particular intersection so those are kind of some of my thoughts around about again that's a 10-year plan so it's going to take a long time for that to be implemented and will it will it work it probably would work the only other thing two more comments if they do the if they do implement the, their recommendation as far as a four-way stop they need to make sure that they reduce the shoulder on heading uh, westbound coming up from Concord on Clinton Street People go right because around. the idiots will go around yeah that and also uh, yeah be you're gonna get complaints doesn't matter what you do and you know what I've been to plenty plenty of public meetings like this and we're all traffic engineers because we all drive everybody's a traffic engineer yeah that's all I have Thank you, John. yeah now, I don't think that the roundabout getting into the queue is a bad thing because they redo the 10-year plan in Concord every two years correct and they keep pushing it along so that you may never see it in the near future but at least if it's in the queue down the road not knowing what the population in the area is going to be yep. it might be a solution that they can look at and not being in there doesn't give them any opportunity of having it because you can always say no and you can al always reduce what you're proposing as well right yeah. so like it's really a 10 to 20 year program really by the time you go through the formalities about a third it does that <laughs> never makes it you have to realize that nine the widening in 93 started 15 years ago when they were starting to do that and they're still playing games with every two years with what they're going to do so just imagine what around the, how long it'll take to get a roundabout i have two questions two other comments one on the side of the right yes rich schaefer eighty old Fort lane first of all i'd like to congratulate tom on using the word quagmire i think that's the word of the evening <laughs> plus he got the cue so he gets 10 points for that too so congratulations to tom for that in in respect to that too the sign that he was mentioning the problem not only is the size but it's verbose you can't read all those words that quickly when you're driving. So if we do put signs up, I just would encourage using minimal words of a large size that are easily to easy to read, and especially with the light conditions that have been mentioned, on, especially heading on the westbound through that intersection. So thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Karen Cassano, Town Fort Lane. Uh, I'm definitely not in favor of a roundabout option. So I like option one more. I guess the concern is we also own the property at 2 Jewett Road, which is right on that corner, across from the Molly Stark House. Uh, roundabouts take a lot of space and a lot of land. Uh, I would hate to see anything eating into the Molly Stark property. It's already pretty close to the edge there and, uh, and our property as well. So I would definitely have some concerns about it. My, another concern I have about that is because it's on a hill. And it's not just the climb heading west, but it's also the decline heading east. Because I've gone, and I'm not racing, I, I try to go really slow to that stop sign when it's snowy, and I've slid right across. And there have been many accidents that are never reported that are near misses on that, that we see and our daughter sees because she lives on the corner. So I just wanted to put I hate about the roundabout. Remember, it's, I look at the roundabout as more of a placeholder as it was stated. So we just want to I make just sure. I wanted to get it on the record. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, but I think we we got to get in the queue for a, a, maybe a longer term solution, and uh, uh, we're not going to decide that here tonight, nor in the next few years. Those uh, those quote unquote traffic engineers will help us with that. Yeah. yeah. If, if, Chief, yeah. If everybody else has spoken, I'd just like to give my thoughts, please. Uh, when I first came to to Dunbar, and I was introduced to this intersection, I, I never saw a three-way three stop in my life. And it seemed like the natural flow of traffic was for the east and westbound traffic with stops on either side. Well, when I stopped here to let other people turn, I learned very quickly that uh, that, that wasn't the way things were done here because I had people honking at me. They were really upset with me for some reason. So um, I think the natural flow 
is east and west, with stops north and south. That, that's kind of what I, what I had thought here. So I gave a little thought to um, how would that actually work out, because it's a single lane in each direction. So last Thursday, I took a ride down there. I, went, I was there at 6 o'clock in the morning. Some of you probably saw my green mm -hmm. car down there. I parked over here at the, the family dental, and I watched the intersection. And I, I made some kind of interesting observations. Now, my big concern were the turning movements. So it would be uh, Clinton Street turning onto Stock North and um, Concord Stage turning onto Jewett. And what I found is they were, in the morning, there were very, very few that made the turn. And, and as I read the, um, the data that the traffic count uh, picked up, it was, it was pretty much the same. What I, what I saw that day was fairly similar, except the volume of cars I saw was lower. So I was there 6 in the morning till 8.30, I think. And my concern was, if, you, if you're traveling westbound, you know, and, the, and this eastbound traffic coming, these cars are going to get jammed up. They're going to back this traffic up because they can't make the turn to go stock north. And what I saw really kind of surprised me. The traffic that came kind of came in spurts. So there would be five or six cars that would go through the intersection, and then there'd be nothing for a while, sometimes for almost a minute. So what I, what I learned, and I watched in the afternoon too, and it was the same type of thing. Um, there was pl I think there was plenty of opportunity for the, um, for the north and south traffic to be able to, to cross because the eastbound traffic wasn't backing up. I, I did watch this in the morning, and that eastbound traffic back way up to the hill, you know, past the pages, I've seen it before many times, but it's because of the stop. When that traffic is allowed to just travel at its natural pace, three, four, five, six cars go by, and there's a big break. So there's, there's plenty of time for other cars to cross east, uh, on the north and south through that intersection. Chief, if we did go that option, uh, the state didn't respond as how we would notify the traffic that that is now just a two-way stop and not a three-way stop because that might cause the same amount of accidents we've already had at that intersection by reversing it back. That's my only dilemma with going backwards. When I ever read the report and they kind of were going back to a two-stop sign situation, I thought that that's almost going to cause as many accidents in the reverse of what we have now with the three stop signs. And, and with that, there would, there would definitely be some danger in there. Uh, and, you know, after we made the change, there'd have to be some kind of education. There'd have to be some kind of warning signs to let people know that there's been some kind of change, maybe with those mobile signs. You know, and maybe some, uh, some, some police presence down there. Because there is going to be a learning curve. But um, I think the... Uh, the east and westbound, having uh, no stop signs, just put a stop on the north and south, would work really well. Everybody would be able to turn, at least anecdotally from what I saw last Thursday in the morning and in the evening when I watched the traffic flow. Uh, one other thing that I've noticed, I mostly work days, so I can't really speak so much for the nights, but the accidents that I've been to, I've been to a few in the intersection, mostly they've been along this eastbound lane, and it has to do with car stopping, somebody else plowing in behind them because somebody stopped for the stop sign and somewhere down the line somebody didn't stop in time. So that's been the bulk of the accidents that I've been to down in this intersection. But Chief, don't you think that would cause more people to speed through that intersection? Now that there's no stop sign, they're, they're just going to go flying through. It's it's 35 miles an hour. Yeah, but it, I, I know. I know. 30 in the center of town and they go through here 50. Yeah. I know. You're never going to be able to, to, to make that 100% compliance. It's impossible. Yeah. No matter how hard we try. We got one guy who um, he spends the bulk of his traffic enforcement time down there. He, he writes a lot of violations there. And he still sees that kind of stuff happening. I can tell you anecdotally, in the time that I was there, I didn't see anybody run through any stop signs. Okay, I didn't see any, anything dangerous down there. I know that drive, in the time that I was there, I didn't see anything like that in those four hours that I was there in the morning and the evening. Now, I know driving there, I've seen near misses, I've had near misses, 
my my strategy is to spend as little time in that intersection as I can, <laughs> and I do it. I zip right through there. Once once it's safe to go and I'm committed, I go because less is better inside that. It, it's a dangerous intersection, but from what I've seen, you know, that's my recommendation: is is the um, stop at Jewett Road, stock north, let the other traffic flow, and again, there's going to have to be some kind of education component. For me. Those um, those speed signs, I, I travel quite a bit, and I go through communities that have them, and I can tell you, for me personally, they really get my attention. When I'm driving through and I see the flashing sign, and uh, you know I know I'm going too fast, I reduce my speed and try to make it stop flashing. That's what I do. We, but I'm, I'm almost 60. I'm like 25. Yeah, but you're the That's police. the way I drive. You know, I'm Massachusetts, I'm not. But, but that's how I react to it. And, and I know there's, there's, there's going to be that component, that be that population that's going to try and speed through it. It's going to happen. But uh, there's a lot of people who are compliant and want to actually survive driving through the intersection. So I think all in all, the preponderance is it would probably be a good thing to do. I really like the flashing lights to one of the, uh, the stop signs. Uh, maybe some kind of a warning ahead on either Clinton Street, or, I mean, uh, Jewett Road or Stock North. Um, one thing you got to be careful of is having too many signs in a small location. Because if you have stop, yield, three-way stop, and all this stuff, it's too much to read. It's, it's, it's kind of overwhelming. So you tend to kind of blank it all out and not see any of it. So those are my thoughts on the intersection for what it's worth. Okay, one more comment. Um, Michelle did post 2304. Did that stop sign used to be a lot bigger? Yes. yes. Well, yes. I thought it used to be. I mean, I remember as a kid that that's like the, one of the biggest stop signs in New Hampshire. Right. So, <laughs> it literally was, that's what it was. It could have been you were a lot smaller. <laughs> <laughs> I was just curious if there was a reason why, if it was a bigger stop sign. I just as an aside, though, on the three-way stop, the three-way stop sign configuration. I think that some, the engineer from the state said they were like three of them in the state of New Hampshire. Is mm -hmm. that something familiar? Because I know we mentioned the number. I think it was mm -hmm. three in the state. Oh, we should so, get rid of it. Then we'll be number one. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, like, there's two other communities that have the same problem that we have. Where are they? And some in Manchester. Hmm. Okay. One other One. comment, though. Uh, Chief, I, I agree with what you're saying. Free flow east, south, east, west. The only thing, though, is, again, they, they would look at, I believe that they're going to have to look at a, a turning pocket to get people out of the flow of traffic to take to take that road. I don't think so. The, the, the traffic... It was was traveling east and westbound. The volume wasn't there. I know that you see the backups here from coming from where uh, in the morning, but when the traffic just flowed, the, the, I don't think there'd be any backup. When you look at their numbers, that's, we're the, numbers the, people. The, the, I mean, understand that. We're numbers. What, what the numbers don't tell you is the cars are coming five or six in a group, and then there's nothing for a period of time. In, in common it isn't sense, just steady. Yeah, in common sense, would would would. Uh, make you think that people would stop. John, they did. They did say to us that even though you know we're going to look at some options here. Yeah. Down the road, one of their options would be, and they, I think Chris heard it too, that turning lanes in those east-west bound locations were probably going to be, you know, one more step down the road. Yeah. So the numbers did, are going to just keep going up. The, yeah. Yeah. But they said it wasn't, you know, as quick as the signs and the other things we're talking about. Right. And I think the signs, though, too, again, that's going to happen pretty quickly. Right. It's not a 10-year no, 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 endeavor. That's, that's, so I'm thinking early spring that. by the time the state gets around with myself. I don't think it's going to happen in the, in the winter months with the plowing and the road. Oh, I see Mary Beth here. She needs to just keep poking them along. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my, my concern about the, having a four-way stop there is the, the, the fun that you have in the morning with the eastbound traffic coming from where, you're going to be able to have just as much fun in the afternoon as the uh, westbound traffic comes and has to stop. It, it's, I think it'll be, you'll have a mess twice a day instead of just once. So with those, the those are my thoughts bad on that. behavior too of yeah. multiple. Yeah. Okay. Those, are, those are my thoughts on the. Uh, last last comments now. 
uh, Don Larson, Birchview Drive. Uh, Saturday morning, going to the transfer station. I've sat there for a long time, and unless you have a courteous, uh, courteous uh, driver at the stop sign there on uh, going uh, east, and to let you get across, and that the traffic coming, uh, you know, going to where is heavy, and it takes a long time to get across that intersection. Makes you a little bit more, doesn't it, Don? Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I think you got to leave the three-way stop in that because people are seasoned to it, but better signage. Plus, people coming up uh, from going east or going west on uh, 13 toward the intersection, they've got to use their turn signal. So if there's some way you can let people know, because you sit there and nobody has their turn signal on, and then this guy, you don't know if this guy's going to turn, you don't know if he's going to go straight. And so that holds up a lot of traffic right there. So, you know, there's some people that just never use their turn signals. No but those are the ones that you end up, you know, so oh, he's, gonna, he's going straight, and you go pull out the intersection, bang. Okay. No pill for stupidity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any final comments? So I want to address a couple of things. One I want to address what the chief was saying is I've got a different experience with that intersection over the many years. One is I've stood up on the political side, which won't surprise anybody. And the pattern you saw sometimes happens, sometimes doesn't. I live a little bit further down Clinton Street, and I try and come on Clinton Street from Page Road every single morning. Some mornings it's the pattern you talk about, other mornings it's a totally different pattern. There seems to be no consistency in the pattern on that way, headed whatever direction, I guess it's what, headed into Concord, is that East or East? East, 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 East. Um, So I know what you're talking about, I've certainly seen that pattern with cars and then a break, and then cars and a break. I've stood at the Bow Community Center and seen the same many times, and some days you get patterns like that, some days you don't. So that's anecdotal, but it's not re super reliable. Next thing I want to say is, Bo had this, has the same problem with its main intersection outside its old fire station, its community center. We had, I think it was two years ago, maybe three years ago at town meeting, I'm losing track, I think it was only two years ago, we had money from the state, seed money, that wouldn't have paid for all of it, would have paid for a lot of the roundabout. And the people who show up, it was decided at town meeting, and the folks who show up at town meeting are a lot of the old timers. And a lot of the younger families and the kid, families that have kids in the high school that want that roundabout didn't show up. And the town voted it down and the money was gone. So I think it's a great idea you, to get in line because to say it's a part of a 10-year plan, you're right, it could be 10 or 20 years out easily from what I see on that 10-year that plan. Um, and get in line. You can always turn it down just like Bo did, you know, if you don't want it. But I think it's really wise to get in line. The last thing I want to say, is there any press here? No, good. No. <laughs> I'm careful sometimes. Last time, last time I was at the DOT. It's a video. It's a video. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyway, last time I was at the, the DOT hearing up on the Heights for the widening of um, 893 and what they're doing off exit 1 on 89. And I'm about, I'll say this publicly because I'm about to draft a letter, I hope on behalf of the entire delegation. DOT is not listening to us. And there was a hearing on Valentine's Day where we went in there, and they've got some cockamamie plan where they're going to pull traffic off, they're going to put it on Locking Hill Road, have a signal light on one side of 89, have some lights go under 89, have a second signal light, and get back on the highway. Which means right on the main road ending out of Bow, they're going to have all kind of the semi traffic with two signal lights about 500 feet apart. It's preposterous. They're cutting off the access to 3A in pretty bizarre ways. It's now a TIF zone, a tax incentive zone for both. They came right out and said they're not paying any attention to that. They're not listening to us. They didn't listen to us in February, and they weren't listening last night. So to the extent you got DOT, let me just say, strong arm it a little bit, because they're not listening to both, and if you want them to listen to you, you're going to have to be a little more assertive to make sure they're listening to you after my experience with DOT. I was pretty appalled at what I was hearing and what I've seen now over time on that whole pattern that they're trying to do on the 8993 stuff on the right. Um, Concord was there last night. The mayor was there as well as their director of development, I think it was called. They were having the same issues with DOT, and they got up having the same thing, saying this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity in Concord to deal with what we're doing. We want river access. I don't know if DOT is trying to save dollars or what, but they are just not meeting the needs and the requests of the communities that are involved with this whole binding thing. So I just put that out there because that's just another piece of my experience with it, just from last night, again, as I say, 
Um, having been at both the Valentine's Day hearing and the last night hearing, I'm seeing this. There's just no interest in what we think our needs are. So, you want? This will be on at 11 tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what, what I want to do is um, take comments on tonight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Get a stuff just put it our thoughts together. Yeah. We'll take any comment tonight. So we come up with yeah. I see some uh, some common themes from people. And I think I, I, one thing value added. One thing value added was I mm -hmm. thought tonight would I hear loud and clear uh, visibility, lighting. Uh, and approach science. So I see those loud and clear, and I see that I agree with the chief. We don't want to overdo it, but a uh, mixture of that, we can, we're going to put some words together, and uh, we'll make the proposal. And the 10-year plan, we are pursuing a, uh, a placeholder in the 10-year plan, for sure. Okay, and uh, so I'm going to close this public hearing now, and um, thank you all for coming out for this. We're going to continue with our selectmen's meeting, but the thing is, uh, appreciate your, I, I'm glad this interest in this, this problem area. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You guys are welcome to stay and watch the rest of the meeting. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I got some paint drying. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 What happened to me this morning? I was coming from what are they going to be doing? Like, uh, and and so, 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 it's a good one because you just like right to lie. Lie. I mean, the corner. But I don't think they realize it because they come on this way. You know, all that writing is right there in the corner. It may be an approach sign, sir. It may be an approach sign further down. I don't even know this is being the synthesizer. I think that was All right, I'm gonna. I, I need to bring the zucchini back to order again. Sure. Thank you for uh, those who want to stay. Thank you. That was Mary Beth. Walt. 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 Uh, I just want to start. Leans gave us a copy in the mailbox of the. Uh, of the uh, she gave people a heads up about the uh, health care plan changes yeah. coming. Everyone saw that. Yeah. Thank you, Lean, for being proactive with that. And I saw you also summarized the meeting to for the people who weren't there as yep. far as uh, the guidance, which is great. Uh, 
I also prepared the um, budget worksheets for all the departments. Those right. were distributed, which took a lot of time, but we're making yeah. progress. I saw you added the budget worksheets to it to the yeah. emails. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, got a letter from <coughs> County Merrimack. I board of is announced his appointment of Ross Cunningham as representative of county administrative functions. I have no idea what he does for the town of <laughs> Do you have any? Yeah, can you make sure that I No, no. Okay. All right. Um, Chief, I got a letter um, uh, from, your, from your department through Chris uh, talking about um, Officer Brian Tyro taking advantage of tuition reimbursement. Yep. Have to look that yep. into the budget. Yep. I have no problem with that. As long as it follows the plan, the personal plan. Police Department, we had a, a letter from the Police Department just uh, uh, community as uh, upcoming events and uh, activity log for the October traffic study. So that goes back to Lean. We all had a chance to look at that. All right, Lean, if you just give us an update, uh, we, were, we had some money left over in the administrative budget as far as a uh, maintenance budget. Um, we have the quotes still pending, I believe. Um, unfortunately, um with the short week, I have uh, the quotes for transportation. I think it's still a work in progress. I don't know that Woody's heard any from any of his contractors. I actually need to meet with you so that we're given the same information to each contractor. Yeah. So I need to get what you said, so because I have two contractors coming, I believe, Tuesday. Oh. Okay. Great. Right. 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 So that email that I gave you would not be suffice to print and use and add notes? I mean, I, but I, it will talk, because I don't know what you told them you want to have done, okay. so we tell them the same thing. Okay. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. And I, just for the both of you, before you guys talk too much about it, we had already reviewed the items that we agreed to have done on that. If we look back at our meeting minute notes, the Board of Selectmen decided this, a list of items for you guys on each of that. For the, the repairs that needed to be done. That's right. And I believe that's what I have mentioned in a memo, yeah. which involved uh, mitigating the mold on the plywood, um, sealing the plywood, and laying down the vinyl sheet, um, washing the walls, painting the walls because they have never been painted, oh. and then adding the base um, molding. molding around the edge. So, yes. um, was, is, I, there, is there I, anything else you can remember, Woody? I don't know if there's electrical problems, really covers, cool. anything like yeah. that. I know we had already worked on it, that's yeah. why. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. if we go by that original list, because we had already, as a board, kind of reviewed it. I'll look at it. And we're doing just the bathroom, correct? I believe just so. In the bath. That's what I. That's why I want to meet with Lee to make yep. sure we're not talking. Because at one point we were talking floor and in the office area. Yeah. We were talking taking care of some of that. I want to make sure that we're on the same page that it's just. I the think bathroom. we'll start with the bathroom, Woody, and then uh, you know we'll step out of there. Right, and that's why I want to make sure yep. we're on the yep. same page that it's just that area. Yep. Now, um, with that pending, uh, this the, uh, the the roof repair at the safety center I think is critical. Yeah, and then, again, I had met with uh, Twin Metal Roofing the week before last. He thought that he could get me that quote before tonight, but I have not heard. So I have his phone number. I will give a follow-up call and with him. If we start running low on money, the vinyl siding, I, I could, I would rather rear the safety center. Yep. I could, I'd rather do the roof this year. And well, he, I don't know if you noticed, but while you brought it up, that was going to be one of my subjects at the end. Okay. The vinyl side has been there removed and installed the new side. Correct. That's good. So he's already off that job and we were talking about, you know, letting him go to the other side right away. So I think that I just don't want to, um, I'd rather eliminate the leak. I think you would agree with me. Yeah. And, and then I'm, if I'm, the leak I'm hoping like is not a big dollar. Huge. Right. right. Yeah. And if, if and then I, I think if we have money, I'd say we definitely hit the, uh, the other side for the, so the final side and then the other side. Yeah. yeah. So if we could get the numbers back for your area, Woody, We'd like to make those decisions on your area mm -hmm. and that roof before we commit to the other side of the building there for your final siding. Did you guys like the workmanship the guy did? I thought he did a great job. They, they were fast. They were uh, they seemed professional. To be pretty, yeah, very professional. They seemed yeah. to do pretty good work. Um, the, the quality of materials seemed pretty good. He did leave one piece of vinyl with the fire department and he left the label. Off the end of the box. Yeah. I photographed the label. I'm going to send it to Lean. Okay. She put it with the with the file, so that if you need it again, yeah. you've got the you've got the part number. Right. And you know the we did go with the better siding again. Just so you guys are aware. We went to the, the not even the middle grade. We went to the top grade siding because 
There was a mixture of sidings on that product from the lowest end to the medium end and the highest end, all the same color but different wood grain patterns. He picked them up like that and knew what it was and we decided as a board to go to the, the better, hoping it holds up a few more years with the ice coming down. And then the, the painting has been, uh, we're going to basically, uh, the painting that has been deferred to the spring. Uh, we're out of the painting season now. But we yeah. haven't covered that. We haven't covered the money, that's so that's, that's, that's going to, that's, we'll be done. Yeah. So all the entryways, all the columns, all of the the um, gable lengths, those entryways are all going to be done and take care of it. Yeah. You know, they're going to clean Steel up the doors. steps in the back, pressure yeah. wash them, seal them. Okay, great. So the building should look substantially nicer. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to, I think the inbox is pretty empty. I'm going to go ahead and open for public comment, public comment again. Yeah, actually, I have one thing on the safety complex. Is a board thought of uh, actually just putting a whole new roof on that building? Like, get it patched for now, and then next year put a completely new roof on it? Because you have two different, three different roofs on there. You know what I mean? You have the original building, then we they did the addition that goes to the fire station side, from the school. Then you have when we built the police station, you know, just doing one whole new roof and we won't did, be uh, done with it. Set up. We did okay. kind of um, go over it, you know, somewhat. Yeah. But our thought was uh, that building was designed in the '60s mm -hmm. uh, with that existing roofing that's on there. So we'd have to check some structural things out about that building before we jumped into it, but we knew that would also be a larger cost and we were trying to take care of some of the smaller items first. No, I'm saying for like your your big project like next year, you'll put a new roof on that building and then you know, you're doing all this other nice work to it to get it buttoned up, do the roof, you're done. Now you can move on to another building. You know what I'm saying? We'll definitely consider that. Yeah, yeah, so we are working on it somewhat. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I was going to mention the, the, the uh, siding, and you already brought that up. The other thing I wanted to mention was paving. Uh, Jeff finished paving the back lot there, and, and i got to tell you, I watched during the last rainstorm, and it drained really well. It was pitched, it looked like it was pitched perfectly, and uh, the following morning when there was ice, I went in there, there was a nice puddle in the whole parking lot. So I think they did a fabulous job of, uh, of getting that thing level graded and pitched. And it's quick connects to the nice school turnaround. No problem with connecting to the school. Yeah, it seemed to everything seemed to be fine. Put in drainage there. It, it was a I think it was a first class job. Chief, are you going to work with the school board in reference to the one way traffic to drop off? I my mind. I thought that yeah. was an excellent idea. And I I wasn't sure why they never did it in prior years. Only that you know that road might get somewhat narrow in the winter is all I could think of. Well, the road's going to be narrow as it is, but. <coughs> The quality of the road is there. I, I don't know that that road would really take the, the pounding. I don't think the the, qua the quality of the road was there to be able to take the pounding of the constant traffic right. of, the, of the cars dropping off every day. Um, previously I, or even now? Previously, I think it's going to be fine now. So, so you're going to talk to the school about that? We, we've been talking about it. It's just a matter of when we implement it. The, the morning drop off isn't going to be any problem. The problem comes in in the afternoon where uh, the, the children have to be sent out to the cars. So we've got to kind of work through that process a little bit, and uh, you know, might, it actually may require them to assign an additional person in. But we'll get that sorted out and, uh, and get it implemented. It's a, it's a much safer Good. plan. Good. Okay. I just want to thank the board for supporting Officer Tyler's uh, tuition reimbursement request. The school that he chose is the same school that I went through under the personnel plan. Um, it's a very good school, great program, and economically, it's very, very competitive. Um, so just thank you on his behalf. Okay, thanks. Well, one last point. Go ahead. Troy Simpson, one of our part-time officers, is hired and is, is already started down in Boston. So we're really, really proud of him. He's, he's done well. But we lost him. We lost him. We lost the part-timer. He's got a full-time career job. And, and we're going to see more human mutual aid calls and things right. like that. Okay. Um, no, really we're, we're still we're still at tight at the hip with Gostown. Yeah. May not be with education, but it has to do with <clears throat> other departments. Mutual aid. So is yes. he no longer part of our? Do you ever provide like a, a resignation letter for the personnel file? I think we need to, we should have. That. He yes he he will be providing one that okay. we'll have over there, and I'll send you a copy. Please, I need that. That's fine. Okay. Okay, back to the board. I want to take it to Dave first. Mike, I think we covered everything we had uh, on the agenda earlier on. Yeah, I, I just don't want to 
I like to ramble on too much for the weather. Mm -hmm. Well, up to you. Well, okay. <laughs> so I just want to give you guys, we talked last week about the cost of health care, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, I know you made the comment that maybe in 2005 it was a, a certain point. I couldn't get there, but I went to an uh, organization that tracks health, the cost of health care. So from 2008 to the first two months of 2017, health care has gone up 144% for the single person. For the family, 177%. And they're looking at the future double-digit numbers going forward. So just so people understand what health care costs, it's a struggle because we're sitting here trying to manage for the town and manage for the employee and trying to find something that works that's going to fit for everyone. So I'm hoping, because they stress that that plan was the same as the first one, except it had source of service, which... It, uh, it requires a little responsibility on the person to, you know, to go look for those places and there'd be no deductible. So just to, so you know, the, the position we're in is we serve two masters. We're trying to keep the people we have working here and we're also trying to address with some of the townspeople who may be paying for your health care but don't have it for themselves because they heard that comment already, you know, and, and it's a, a tough situation to, to be in, but we're trying to do the best we can. Thank you, Bob. Concur. Okay. And I'll take it to Tom Mosher. I just wanted to let the board Elaine. know that I attended a seminar today that was a um, uh, focus of the trustee of the trust funds. John Casey had requested that um, I attend that with him so that if there was anything that he missed that I'd be able to assist him with. Um, I've asked him to come before the board to talk about a few of the options that they have as trustees. Um, I think it's important that the selectmen are aware that uh, the trustee of the trust funds work on the same line as the cemetery trustees. And there was a lot of good information. Uh, there's new information that they're going to have to comply with. Um, the uh, state, uh, the federal trust in, uh, by January 1st is going to require that they upload their uh, MS-9 and MS-10 through their portal like I typically do through um, the DRA and it's actually the same company that's developing that for um, the federal trust so I think it was a good thing that I went I think I can uh, lend a lot of um, guidance and assistance with John but I've asked him to come in and talk to you about uh, what he's learned and what he would like um, to share with you so and expect him in the near future. Thank you. Anything else? Um, one other thing, uh, this week recently we had one individual contact the town um, offices for to ask if we had um, adopted the, um, the was it the veterans? Expanded veterans. Expanded veterans option and um, I'm, so we're hearing a little bit of uh, information about that so it's possible that there may be a petition warrant article in uh, February that comes before the board. Um, I'm not sure which direction it's going to go. But at the time that it was uh, passed at the state level, the you know, board decided not to act on it until they could get we could get more information. So. I got one more question for you once we have time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, can we uh, make a packet of information that I prepared early, just for information, maybe two weeks before that agenda, just so you can be aware of it? Yep. Yep. We can do that. Okay. Go ahead. Woody, have you had any new applicants at the transfer mm -hmm. station? No, sir. Um, I know it's snowing tonight and tomorrow, but um, do we have the sign out on the road? <coughs> After the storm, can we try and get that one out there to try and get a couple new applicants? Because I think you're getting pretty slim now, right? Yeah. Yeah, we don't typically leave that sign out. That's like a $400 sign. Right. We'll leave it out at night. We'll put it out when we're there. Yeah, that's we don't leave it out at night. Yeah. yeah. It is posted on NHMA website. Yeah. Put okay. it there, but on the town website. Mm -hmm. well, I know it's I know it's posted when you go through the. Yep. Yeah. yeah we'll stick it back out. We'll stick it back out on the. On, the, on a side note to that, um, I like to figure out. Um, I asked Lean. I'm going to ask you too to work with Lean during the next two weeks. I know we have Thanksgiving, but we're not going to meet for two weeks. Yeah. But one thing. Um, we may want to consider is consider the 
the recyclables, the non-cost-effective recyclables, now there's the stuff that we're not getting paid for or right. it's paid squat for, we may want to consider at this time to put it in this mainstream trash. Uh, and the, we could pay for that additional tonnage by the, we're not paying salaries because we don't have the people there. And that would take some of the workload off the recycling center. So I want to maybe work with Lean to identify those uh, non, as I said, non-productive recycl recyclables. And in fact, someone will say anything to tonight, Dave, you leave the line just before I left had the, uh, yeah, the program on the there, yeah. showing that, you know, people think there's a magic bubble because you put it in a recycling bin, that it actually is going to be recycled and have some place to go. And they said that a large percentage of recycled material has nobody to purchase it on the other end. That's and so it goes right back into the transfer uh, landfill. Right, I think what you're, what they're referring to, because I saw the part of the ad is Pernard, and they, they're yeah. talking about single stream. Yeah. So we're so separated, there's a, actually a pretty big difference between the two. Yeah. At this point, I think yeah. the loss of salary or payroll, we could actually use the, those dollars to pay for the extra tonnage we create. And so that's something I want to consider. So that would take some workload off the front end recycling center side. Yeah. So I'll work with Lean if you would. Yeah. We'll get some numbers and we like to review the numbers in two weeks. And we'll be on vacation next week. So if we have time, I don't know how busy yeah. you'll be. Next week? No, I'm on vacation. So I would say next week's no. almost done. Okay. Oh, speaking yeah. of, are you going to be changing your hours at all? Nothing? Okay. 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 Anything else, Dave? Bob, we're good? No. All right. Make a motion to adjourn at 8.31. So be it.